little 8x10 painting that uh, only takes a couple of hours to paint. So if you're looking for a project that doesn't take too long, this is a great one to do. It's one I really enjoy teaching in classes because everyone who tries this for the first time really enjoys the change from using tints of blues and tints of pinks, using a glaze of yellow and coming up with uh, all the colors of green and all the colors of the different uh, oranges that happen with that glaze. So anyway, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, if you want to do this as a project yourself, please do. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. Take care. This photo was taken on the way to Drinan Pass, which is in the Valhallas. I'm adding a ground to the campus using GAC 500 and Quinacridone Magenta. I divide my canvas into thirds. This makes it easier for me to do my drawing. The reference is also divided into thirds so I can look into each rectangle as I draw. I look for the horizon line first and then for all the big shapes that I can see before doing smaller details. When I no longer need the third lines, I wipe them off with a wet paper towel. The stroked lines that I'm putting through some of the areas are to let me know where the dark shades will be. Everyday white chalk will do, or if you're working on a lighter surface, you can use things like a watercolor pencil or a pastel pencil. On your palette, mix two shades of blue. Use thalo blue and add white, and make about a mid-tone blue as you see here in the painting. The other shade of blue is going to be lighter than this, and it'll be used for the foreground grasses and the back mountains. For your brush, use a flat or angled synthetic brush like you can see that I'm holding. I'm holding the brush at the end of the, the handle to create looser marks. Keep the paint thick at this point. Uh, you hardly need any medium at all, and we want to cover up that background pink. It may seem odd to start the painting in this way. Quite often we're taught to start in the background with the sky, the mountain, the trees, and then the foreground. The way that we're painting here is a little bit more painterly and it keeps the painting more interesting. Also I'm painting this way, it lets me choose when and how much of that background pink I want to allow to show through. I'll talk more about this as we go along. Besides the edges of the trees, the blue that we mixed right now is also going to represent some of the shadows in the grasses. Everything that's painted blue right now is going to be glazed with yellow, which will make for a nice green. So right now your goal is to look for all the areas of the same shade of green. Once this blue shade is dry, take some of your thalo blue, thin it with GAC 500 and glaze it over all the areas that will be dark. This thalo blue, when it goes over the magenta, is going to be a purple color. By glazing the thalo blue over the mid-tone blues that you painted on earlier, you create another level of shading. To better see shades when you're looking at your reference material, what you need to do is to squint your eyes. By squinting your eyes, you're able to see shade better because you're reducing the amount of color that you're taking in. To make it easier to see how light or dark a color is, you can take your photo reference and change it into a black and white image. You can uh, go onto your phone or your computer and make it into a grayscale image. If you don't have technology, a really old school way to be able to see color better or the shades of color better is to get a piece of red cellophane from the dollar store and look through it at your reference. What that does is reduces the color and helps you to see the shades. Continue to add glazes of phthalo blue wherever you feel like you need to get darker shades. Now we're switching to the lighter blue that we mixed on our palette and we're going to place that in the lighter areas in the foreground for representing the grasses. To create perspective with your marks, use smaller marks in the background and larger marks as you come forward. Continue to hold the handle near the end. Keep a light hold 
and turn your hand in different directions to create marks that look more organic. As you're painting the edges of these bushes and grasses, resist the urge to make them too symmetrical and perfect. Take the lighter pile of phthalo blue and add some more white to it and then take that paint and create a few more light edges along these grasses. Once you're done painting in all the areas that will be future green, clean off your brush and take magenta and tint it with white. Add this magenta color, this pink color, everywhere that's going to be the future orange. Now that we have both the light blue and the light magenta colors placed, go through and check if there's any areas that you need to adjust. Clean up some edges, add some more lights and darks, whatever you think you need to do before we do the glaze. I got carried away with the darkening so I went back in and took some of that lighter blue and went back onto the edges and created more of those light areas I need to have. Using a mid-tone blue, paint around the trees to create the mountain in the background. This is called negative space painting. It's one of the things that makes the painting more interesting and also it allows me to play with edges and correct edges with the mountain as I work around the trees. It also lets me decide how much of that pink color will show through. Add more white paint to your blue pile and do the next set of mountains. This part of glazing is always a lot of fun. So once your painting is dry, take nickel azel yellow and add GAC 500. With a soft synthetic brush, brush this layer of color over all the blues and pinks that you've done so far. Have a moist rag ready to go in case you put too much glazing down. Then you can always just wipe it off as you go. I see that I need to lighten the edge of this tree. I also want to make it come forward from the trees that are in the background. So I'm readjusting the values one more time. I'll let this uh, blue tinted paint dry and then I will glaze it again with the yellow. I decided to add a phthalo blue glaze on the tinted trees and on the background mountain. Here I took titanium white and added a tiny bit of cadmium yellow medium. This paint is going on nice and thick, covering up all the pink that's underneath, though I am leaving a few little pink edges around those bright light marks. On my palette, I mix my paints using a palette knife rather than my brush. It keeps my brush from getting uh, too full of paint as I go along. And sometimes I'll use some of the paint right off of that palette knife uh, to load my brush again. Here I realized that I had forgotten to put some of the tinted blue colors into the water of the creek in the foreground. Yeah, I could have been more organized about it, but I still had that paint loaded on my palette, so on we go. It's great to use a glaze of color to uh, readjust the values in a painting. So here I'm taking the phthalo blue and adjusting some of the blue tinted areas. While I have that phthalo blue glaze, I'm going over top of some of the yellow green areas and making them more into a green color. I know it seems weird, I'm painting the sky very last. So again, this is called negative space painting. I can adjust the edges of the trees as I go along. And also, when doing a sky this way, I can adjust the value of the sky to fit the rest of the painting. Sometimes we tend to paint the sky too dark. 
Another reason why I paint the sky last is I can take the color of the sky and change it to fit the rest of the painting. So I don't always paint a blue sky. Sometimes a yellow sky, a green sky, a pink, or other color will look better with the rest of the painting for color continuity. Here I'm continuing to adjust the values using a blue glaze. The light is coming sideways between the mountains and hitting these trees in the distance, so I want to re-lighten them to create the sense of light. In most of my paintings I use a flat or angled brush for almost the entire painting. With the angle or flat brush I can take the corner of the brush and create small marks. I can turn the brush and do straight lines. I can flip the brush and do big wide marks. Instead of yellow I decide to add a phthalo green glaze on top of these lit tree edges. Uh, if you don't have phthalo green, you can just use the yellow or a tiny bit of phthalo blue, let it dry, and then put the yellow on top, like I'm going to do next. So once that phthalo green was dry, I took uh, some of the uh, um, Nicolazo yellow and glazed over top of those greens once more. While I had that Nicolazo yellow, I decided to brighten up some of the background yellow areas and also some of the grasses in the foreground. Here I've taken titanium white and added a tiny bit of that cadmium yellow and added it to the sky. In the sky on top of the tinted yellow I also added tinted magenta. When you put the yellow and magenta together and juxtapose color, those two colors it creates a nice glow. Here's the finished painting. Notice that little bits of the original magenta ground are peeking throughout the painting. The lit areas on the creek allow the eye to follow along and then up to the trees and to the background mountains and to the sky, creating a nice S design. Here is the supply list. Thanks so much for watching and if you want to see more videos, please subscribe.